what they did to you, if it was a Palestinian, it would have been way worse. 100%. It would have been way worse. 100%. Day two in Aqsa on our way to Beidohor. We're on a hunt for some shades. It's currently 30 degrees. The weather is perfect though, it's not humid at all. The vibes are just amazing. Everyone's so friendly. Salam yeah. on you everywhere you go. Walk into a masjid, it's their own city. All the fruits, vegetables, all Muslim owned. Make sure you support them. So this shop, I don't think it ever closes. Yesterday afternoon we bought rare mats from there and at night bought some sliders. It was about five o'clock in the morning, still open. Definitely grabbing some of these for if start. This view never gets old. Subhanallah. So when it comes to afternoon prayer, I highly recommend to pray inside and not outside. It's very, very hot. So we're now going to go into the dome on the rock. Definitely need some shades. Ready to keep my eyes open. Alhamdulillah. Finally found my sliders. They were on a little walk. Someone might have borrowed it. Put my shoe sliders on. Alhamdulillah. I bought a pair of sliders yesterday, five o'clock in the morning. Very uncomfortable. Cutting up my toes. Very happy sliders back. PSL massive here. PSL massive. Watch out for the new podcast, Andrew Tate on there, yeah? <laughs> you realise when you come to Aqsa, there's no Palestinian police guards. There's only security. Brother here. And what they do is guard the inside of the mosque. It stops the Yahudis from entering, protecting the Muslim. These scumbags here so randomly just search people for no reason. What was the issue? Especially the youth. It's disgusting. They love searching them as if like the little kids are going to be carrying contraband or weapons. Bro, it's our street food for iftar. Salam alaikum. Salam. My quest to find shades is proving very difficult. My eyes are hurting, my head's hurting. The sun is just so bright. Now I'm in the shade, so it's okay. Just got back to the hotel. Silly me. I left my passport in the money exchange shop. There's some kind here called the hotel state that I left my passport. Yesterday, one of the brothers left his wallet in the shop. Even though the friends went to collect it, they weren't given it because they couldn't verify it was the same person. The people here are genuine. They understand the importance of all people's belongings and positions. But to be honest, I don't even mind if I lost this. I wouldn't mind spending the rest of my life here. The land with the people. Just had a shower. I'm gonna head over to the mash, try and get there a bit early, grab some iftar on the way. Hopefully spend the rest of the night there, inshallah. Car people, old school VWB tool here. What's up, bro? What do you want to get? I want to get some shawarma. Al Mukat, and they sell Mala sweet. Yeah. My quest to find Shay is still ongoing. I did actually find a pair. They wanted 1200 shek for 400 pounds. But yeah, at this rate, they'll need to start supporting me. In the old city, street stalls closing up soon for Maghrib. I think they're going to close for the night as well. Tomorrow is Friday, and I believe most of the shops and stores will be closed. Getting a iftar from here. Getting a chicken shawarma and chips inside it. Looking forward to this. Fresh. I love it. Shawarma? Shawarma. Yeah, take care. Look at that. Yeah. The brothers here are very generous. Oh my days. Oh my days. 
but I'm looking for someone to open up a business with back in London. <laughs> 20 chips, but that's right. Hi, sir. Ramadan Mubarak. Brothers are from Broly. The message we want to give to our brothers is come to Al Aqsa. Please fill up this masjid. The people of Palestine, the West Bank, they can't come in. They're closed. You people on Rishi Sunnah Passport, just come and fill up this masjid, my brothers. 200 pound flight with airline. It doesn't cost much. Come here, fill this masjid so then the people know that the Palestinians are not alone. So if you're going back home, Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, wherever, stop that for a week and come to Al Aqsa. You will love it. And when you come here once, you come again and again and again. Assalamu alaikum alaykum. Try this drink last night. Really nice. It's amazing how during Maghrib time everyone's going towards the compound to open the fast and pray Maghrib, stay there until Isha, pray the Taraweh. Of course you have these cowards as well, but hopefully you won't be here for long. Scumbags. You people are doing Ithakaf inside what you doing, baby? for the last 10 nights of Ramadan. What you doing? So Hi. brothers are doing it inside there. The sense of unity is yeah. just surreal. There's a lot of people wearing high vis, literally just helping out, just doing it for the sake of Allah. People of all ages helping, down to that little five, six year old boy, and you get food and water for all the people. It's amazing. Patiently waiting. As you can see, everyone's very hungry today. There's a lot of food and a lot of drink. We have Akhi Mahmoud and Akhi Ali. These brothers I met in Switzerland two years ago. Yes. And I said to them, Inshallah, one day visit them in Palestine. Alhamdulillah, I'm here. So happy to see you, brothers. Oh, man. Really Wallahi, really so happy to see you, brothers. Yeah. I've been looking forward to this. How you brothers been? You good? Yes. Alhamdulillah. So to come to the Aqsa Mosque, because we have a uh, very occupation and uh, everything, we come to here, we do our prayer tarawih here. And there, uh, the people, you see the atmosphere. Yes. Yeah. Do you guys live uh, close to here? No, we are two hours from here. Two hours, subhanAllah. We come to here today. West? Not west, uh, north. Yes, uh, two hours to here. We come today. We still here uh, to Saturday. We take a hotel. Okay. okay. Brothers and sisters, we are here in Masjid Al Aqsa, the third holiest place in Islam. This is Maswar Rasul. Our duty to come here, pray in Masjid Al Aqsa. Guys, we invite you to come. Every people here, everyone is here. <laughs> Why is this place so important? It was a first Qibla. So this place is very holy. Sahaba was here. A lot of Sahaba died in this place. A lot of Sahaba died for this place. This place where the Prophet go in the Burak, go to the heaven. And we invite you guys to come here to Masjid Aqsa. Why is it important for people from the UK to come here? They should visit this whole place. Should see brothers yeah. and sisters here in this place. We're happy to see you guys. Just pray here or come here. This is support. Okay. Yeah. Inshallah. Mashallah guys. Inshallah. Barakallah. Inshallah. My name is Bakir. A lovely place to be. I encourage all brothers, inshallah, to come and join us here and to join, more importantly, our Palestinian brothers in the cause and uh, hopefully contribute, inshallah. Come freedom. to Palestine. Why is it important for people around the world to come to Palestine? To get rid of a lot of misconceptions around this place, the actual situation on the ground. Our brothers are strong here, but they need our support, definitely. So from a financial point of view, there's a lot of good that can be done here with our money. So the more support them, the better. If you support the economies, they got bills to pay, the rising costs affect everybody across the world. More so here, whatever good we can send here and bring will be of great use, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. khair, akhi, inshallah. It's important for us to come visit Aqsa to show support to the brothers, come see what their situation is like. People, they don't know the actual reality of what's happening, just watching videos. You will learn a lot when you come here, see the struggling. Left the masjid early to go back to the hotel and try and get some sleep. I want four hours sleep at the moment. Tried for about two hours. I try and go back into the masjid now. Guards, they close the gate about 11 o'clock. Try and get in. Most likely not, but if I try. So I get a call from reception and say, got passport downstairs for Mr. Islam. I was like, what? I had a look at my bag. To my surprise, my passport wasn't in there. Never left anything before. It's always the first. Somehow figured out what hotel I was in. Contacted the hotel, dropped off my passport back to the hotel. Got my sliders back and I got my passport back. Trying to go to sleep, it made me feel a bit peckish. Grab a little snack, a drink, wake myself up. So many options. A lemon drink, ketchup flavour Pringles. Time is around 2 o'clock now, on my own. I've never felt so safe in my life.
The doors are locked, they won't let anyone in. There's not even any guards outside. I believe they're just inside, they're not letting anybody in. No. Best crap I've ever had in my life. Ten ten. This is what the Palestinians have to go for every single day. This many people during Fajr is unheard of. Just been told the brothers and sisters from West Bank have been allowed in. They've come in now. It's almost like the first time they've come in, taking pictures, smiles on the faces. Need more brothers and sisters to come over I'm from around the world. It's a must. The Palestinians need it. His name is Abu Ahmed. He's the richest Palestinian, and every day he's been giving out food. Allah. He gives it out to everyone that comes here. May Allah bless him. So today, the brothers from West Bank and neighboring cities in Palestine have been let in for the whole day. It happens to coincide with Juma as well. Alhamdulillah, the mosque is packed. The IDF trying to cause as much problems as they can, trying to provoke the Muslims. Subhanallah. Look at that. Palestinians every day. Oh, Akbar! The gas is burning our eyes. <laughs> 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 This is what the brothers says. Just go, go for every single day. Every single day. <coughs> they go through this. No, I can't. Oh my god, this is bad. This is really bad. <coughs> this is so bad. <coughs> Oh, my eyes are burning, my mouth, every fish is burning. Look at that, it's still smoking over there. It's still smoking. Ugh. Right, it's getting stronger as well. If there's one thing you can say to the brothers in the UK right now, what is it? It's a feeling of brotherhood. They knew it was going to happen. Yeah, we didn't, obviously. It was the first time here. They knew it was going to happen. There's different forms of resistance. Yeah. Occupation of guns. They don't have guns. So they use their voice and they threw tear gas at them. They know they can't say nothing much. They know they're going to get attacked. We in the West, we can say whatever we want. Nothing's going to happen to us. So we have to be their voices. We have to scream and shout from their behalf. This tear gas that we, we had a little bit of, nothing compared to what they go through every day. Nothing. See, guys, it's alright. The block knows straight up. <laughs>
Push your law, brother. Lucky for some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going, it's going. Lucky for it's some. Fine. Alhamdulillah, yeah, it's starting to go down now. But it feels amazing, right. I'm not going to lie. Turns out, brother was just then. In it. I have never, ever experienced anything like that. Not Hajj, not in Mecca, not in Medina, yeah, nowhere, nowhere, man. Nowhere. Nowhere at all. Special people. Come back every year. You know, before we year. came, people used to tell us Palestinian brothers are special. You will not understand it until you come here, man. 100%. You, know you won't understand the people until you come here. You know what just happened is normal for his brother. He's taking pictures here They're as if it's the first time ever they've been here. They're only allowed to come here one time in the whole year. Alhamdulillah, it just happened to be Friday, the mosque. Absolutely packed. Look at the brothers. Got tear gas, and the brothers are just happy. All the brothers are just happy. SubhanAllah, man. Allahu Akbar. Imagine the people in their own land being oppressed. The UK government, the US government are facilitating all of this. Security checks just to come into the masjid. They're facilitating all of this. Where do I start? I just had an IOF just attacked me. Started pushing me, kicking me. No reason. They had a little boy in one of the houses on the side. And they put a sack over his head and I was just recording it. The little guy come, first pushed me and started kicking me. Don't know what the hell else they used. You know what the worst thing is? What they did to you, if it was a Palestinian, it would have been way worse. 100%. It would have been way worse. 100%.